everyone, how are you? It's Casey. Um, today I am going to do the promise tutorial that I talked about in my last video uh, regarding uh, fingernail stickers as eyelid art for uh, custom Blythal. So I have a new doll. Here she is in the works. I will be changing her hair. I don't like these really thick braids, but I'm probably gonna still do braids and just thin it out. Um, but I can't really work on her hair until I can put her together, and I can't put her together until I finish her eyelids. So I thought it would be a perfect time to do this tutorial. So I'm gonna show you what I do, or what I have done. I've only done this one time, but I had the idea and I ordered a ton of these fingernail stickers from AliExpress. And when I first got them, I could not figure out how to use them. <laughs> it took me some time because you ha I, I thought they would be like stickers, like peel and stick, but they're not. You actually have to get them wet and they're very delicate. But the result is super, super cute. And you saw that result in my last video about um, the BlytheCon donation. So I'm going to show you what I did and I was really happy with the results so hopefully this one will come out similar. So she's a redhead and her dress is this green and brown vintage dress. So I kind of went through and pulled out some of the ones that I liked. I really like having floral eyelids and lately I have been sort of also distressing the eyelids a little bit um, to match kind of the vintagey distressed look of the clothing that I like to use. So I'm probably going to use these greens. I really liked this whole set because um, the leaves are kind of brown and some of these darker colors. I also really liked the arrows on this one, not the flowers so much because they're really bright, but I really like the arrows. But all of them have really cute, like I love these orange butterflies and all of them have, have cute elements that might work. But the first thing um, I do and that I plan to do is prep the lids with paint. So you wouldn't have to necessarily paint the lids, but if you want a base color and you don't want, you know, the skin color, then you would need to paint it. So I'm planning to paint kind of a, but I was thinking, I don't want to go matchy matchy. The dress is brown. So I'm thinking about painting the lids kind of a beige, um, sort of vintagey looking color and then put the, the stickers on top. So the first thing is painting. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna mix some colors. And what I usually do with lids is sand them first. So let me actually move this camera down a little. So my head's not in the way. And so I will take a little bit of 100 grit sandpaper and just sand the shine off. I don't know if this is necessary, but it seems like it will help the paint and everything stick. I do have a pair of eyes already in there as well as um, a stock pair. So just being careful when you're sanding or painting or doing anything that you're not damaging any eyes you have in there. I prefer to keep all the eyes out until I'm done, but I wanted to keep that stock pair because it's a really cool green. Um, and then I put those in and glued them a little bit because they're glass. So I'm not gonna try to get them out because I was trying to decide if I liked them or not. So anyway, just a caution to remember if you have, have eyes in there being very careful. But I don't think you have to do this, overdo this. I just sand the shine off and wipe it with a clean cloth so there's no dust on it and then go ahead and paint. So let's do that and then we will mix 
up the color that we want. I brought brown and a couple, like a peachy color and a beigey color um, that I'm gonna mix. Okay. going for a specific color so that looks about what I was thinking um, and then when you paint the lids you don't want to get it really really thick because your lids can scrape um, along the faceplate so I actually always um, First of all, seal your lids when they're done, which we'll, we will do, but also cut a little bit of the eye socket of the doll itself so that it doesn't scrape because once you do your artwork, it is a real bummer if you put the eye mech in and then it completely scrapes it. So I'm not really doing this perfectly because it doesn't need to be because we're going to distress it. It's actually pretty close to the skin color, so I don't know if I want to go darker. Sometimes I'll kind of look with the doll. I guess it's different. Normally what I do when I'm distressing is I do like a base coat and then I will do some darker colors around. So I think we'll go with this for the base coat. Um, let it dry and then what I do is I usually at the very end go over it with a yellowish brown color to make it look a little bit aged. So you think it'll be fine that this color is kind of close to the skin tone. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry and then we'll decide if we wanna do two coats. I wouldn't do more than two coats um, of a base coat. So let's let that dry and we'll see. I have cut out quite a few here. I'm not sure uh, that I'm gonna use them all, but these are kind of the colors that I wanted to do. So I thought with this large one, I would do that one first on one of them. Some of the larger ones maybe in the background, I don't know. But what you're gonna need is a little bit of water and some tweezers. Um, because the way that it works is you put them in the water for a few seconds. I don't even know if there's an actual time, but you put them in there and then they will separate from the paper, but they're really delicate. I didn't ruin any when I did it before, but I don't know. It seemed, it seemed pretty simple, but I could see how it could be hard. Um, there could be problems. So we're gonna just give it a try. Hopefully it's as easy as last time. Um, but yeah, so you put it in the water. I found that it had to be a few seconds. It wasn't really fast, but it wasn't really long. And you can kind of test it by pulling it out and trying to, um, between your fingers, pull it off. And if it doesn't move, then it needs to go back in for a few seconds. And then trying again and you'll see it starts to move. So what I did is move it to my finger and then delicately pick it up with the tweezers and lay it where I wanted it. Now the eyelids are not a smooth surface. Well, they're smooth, but they're not flat, but neither are um, fingernails but because you've painted under there you just want to be careful I dab it off with a cloth so that it doesn't ruin our paint if you're using acrylic and that's it rubbing it making sure I haven't used one this large so you might have to gently rub it and make sure all the bumps are out but that's basically how you do it. And then you can layer it. So um, 
I'm probably gonna layer some on top of this one. I like these orange. It's hard to tell what they'll look like with the backing, but because the backing is clear, it's really pretty when they're done. So let's do this little orange flower. The other thing to remember with Blythe lids um, is that the entire lid isn't always seen. So you might want your doll handy to kind of see what you will, what artwork you're actually going to see because some of it will be cut off, which is, which is cute in some ways because you can, um, do the whole lid just don't put your your favorite elements should be as much in the center as possible I just love the way that it looks painted and I've, I've never really been happy with my um, eyelid art because one, I'm not really a painter. It's not one of my, uh, what I'd say my best skills are. Um, and painting on these lids is, is really hard because they're so tiny. So I've never been super thrilled, but I love this really delicate look. This is exactly what I would want to paint if I could paint. Um, so I'm really happy to find this. So I think I'm gonna add this color over here and then maybe something else on this side, but then I think we'll try starting on the other side. And if you want to, um, if it goes over the lid, you can trim off whatever you're, is hanging over. So, so far I like that. I think I'm going to start on the other side. I might end up adding more, but this one more in the center this time. So there's all kinds of stickers. As you can see, I got a lot of the floral ones, but there are animal ones. I mean, there's literally anything you could want. Um, all kinds of themes. Really, really fun. There was once a day that I would pray for you. I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too. Sneaking looks up and down from across the room. Damn, what a hell of a view. I feel good, you look great. I like you, I can't wait. A first time, a first day. You're so fine, I'm so lame. You sip wine, I drink straight. Don't waste time to my place. I feel my heart erased. Catch me if I fall
can, I think this side needs a little green along the side. So I'm gonna add some green and then I think we'll be close to being done. Well, done with the sticker application. After this, I, like I said, I'm gonna paint over with like a, um, an antique wash. I'm gonna do a little sanding um, and to distress it a little bit. some of these leaves along the corners just just so there's some green poking out there was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too sneaking looks up and down from across the room damn what a hell of a view I feel good you look great I like you I can't wait our first time, our first day You're so fine, I'm so lame You sip wine, I drink straight Don't waste time to my place There. I like it. Okay, so that's the stickers. Now, like I said, we're going to do this kind of wash. Oh, just spilled the water. Um, let me go change the water. When I do a wash, I take a little bit of brown and yellow and just a little bit of water, whatever water was left in here from the stickers and just get kind of a muddy color. make sure it's thinned out enough that it's not going to completely change the color. And then I will sort of brush over it. Just be careful with your stickers. And then dab. Because it, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's what's fun about distressing things. The other part um, is a little bit of sanding, but I would wait till it's pretty dry, otherwise they're gonna just tear. Um, and you do, definitely don't have to do sanding either if you don't want. And some of the spots you can make it a little bit thicker, thinner, um, darker, if there's a spot you want to do a little bit darker. The other thing that I'm going to do is use a little bit of pastels to darken around where the eye eyelashes will go. So I'm going to get the palette for that. And I just have some leftover from painting the doll that I'm going to do around the edges, but I actually might need more. So let's get some of that color.
again just being careful that your your eyes are not in um, because some of this might get on the eyeball as you can see and you don't want to ruin any eyes you have in if it's on the eyeball you should be able to rub it off very easily or wash it off or sand it off but if you ruin eyes that are in there that is harder. You also can put a piece of paper in there if you want to be extra careful. Um, I don't want to, I don't have the patience to do that, so I'm not going to. So there we go. And, you know, just kind of repeat that until you are happy with how it looks. And then once it's dry, we will seal it. None of this back here is really gonna be seen, but I like kind of adding. All right, so let's let that dry and then we will seal it and see what it looks like in the doll. So I'm going to use my normal sealer. It's kind of shiny for this. If you really want it to stay looking really distressed, you might not want to, but I really like having a sealer. I don't think it takes away very much, um, even though this sealer is pretty shiny, uh, but I like that it protects. So I use this and I just do one coat. Um, and I've never had an issue, so that's what we're gonna use. And then we will apply her lashes and get the mech put in. So here she is put together. And as I said, I still have parts to work on, including her hair, her beads, and all of her eye chips. But this is how her lids look. So I hope you like it. I'm happy with how they came out. I love it. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but my plan is to maybe make up some custom IMAX that have lids already done. I don't know if this would be of any interest to anyone, but I actually kind of enjoy making them, so I may add them to my shop. I don't know that I will be adding the stickers. They're pretty easy to come by, except for it might be fun to make um, different combinations than are available, so I don't know. I really enjoy making them, and um, so more might be coming with those. But as of now, you can get your own on AliExpress. I'm sure they have them other places as well. And I hope you enjoyed watching uh, what I've discovered about using them. I hope it was helpful to you. This girl will be done soon. I will most likely be listing her, although I'm hoping um, to save her for BlytheCon. I have a couple other base dolls on the way, but because they take me so long to make, if I sell any of them now, then I won't have any dolls for BlytheCon. So I haven't quite decided yet um, what her fate will be, so we shall see. But more dolls to come, and as always, thanks for watching. I hope you're all staying cool wherever you are, and we'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye.